Good morning, TRUMC. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day. So happy to have all of you joining with us in worship today. Those of you who are here in person at the 11 a.m. service and those who are coming from our first ever trip, Bible trivia hour, they're still making their way over from the gym. We had so much fun over there that the good times spilled over into the worship service, but it is okay. It was a wonderful trivia time. Uh, those of you who are in the parking lot right now worshiping on 88.9 FM, those of you who are online right now worshiping on Facebook and on YouTube and then later on our podcast, along with those who were here at 845 this morning, all of you today are part of the TRUMC worshiping family and we're so grateful that you have joined with us. My name is Jonathan Tompkins, one of the pastors here along with Pastor Christine Matthews and we uh, greet you this morning with grace and with hospitality. Our choir is about to begin us with our choral call to worship. Let us use this time to prepare ourselves to worship the God who loves us. as you are able for our opening reading. Hear these words of Jesus from Matthew's Gospel. This is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door, no more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. Jesus is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Join our voices together in song. In unity, we lift our song.
sisters and my brothers, I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our light and our life. I invite you now to greet those around you with Christ's peace, with Christ's love. Greet others the way that you wish to, that they wish to be greeted. <laughs> Thank you, friends. You may be seated. Good morning again, friends. Allow me to lift up some announcements for us. If you have a bulletin, you will find these on the second to last page there. Uh, Those of you who are here in the sanctuary and if you're sitting on the middle aisle side of your pew, if you would please begin passing the attendance pads. Uh, If you mark down that you're here and if you're joining us today for the first time, if you give us Uh, A way to contact you, we'll just contact you this week with more information about us. Once they've been passed all the way down, please pass them back and that way you can see who you're sitting near and you can greet those folks again uh, by name after this service. Uh, For those of you online especially, you will see a QR code there on your screen that takes you to our digital connect card. That allows you to let us know that you're worshiping with us today. Please go to our website and fill that out. There's another QR code here. It'll take you to our weekly email list sign up. We send out church-wide emails during the week just to make sure that you stay connected and informed. And if you're not yet receiving those, you can use this QR to sign up. We had a wonderful TRUMC trivia hour uh, just before this service. Thank you to those teams uh, who came and we gave uh, awards to the top three teams and each team that received an award uh, got a gift certificate, one for them, and also one to give away to bless other people. So uh, let me know, teams, who won the top three. Let me know who you are going to bless or who you blessed uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you for that wonderful time. We will be looking for other opportunities to play trivia again. would love if more of you would come and join us. Uh, Pastor Christine is still in need of some Sunday school teachers for our preschool and kindergarten class. Those are wonderful, wonderful students and would love to have you as their teacher. Please speak with Pastor Christine. Uh, Our backpack ministry is up and running. We uh, donate food, donate money, and donate our time to help feed uh, students from local schools. I think right now we are helping with five different local schools to help feed them on the weekends. So far, 39 of you are signed up to donate food on a monthly basis. That is amazing. Thank you to the 39 of you who have done this. Interestingly enough, I looked at the sign up yesterday. Interestingly enough, 38 of you are women and one of you is me. So <laughs> guys, I don't know where you are, but uh, you know, uh, okay, here, here, that's the good news. Here's, here's better news. There are still 19 opportunities for you to donate food on a monthly basis. 19 slots left. Um, I know with me, I'm in charge of black beans. So I give 10 cans of black beans on the third Sunday of every month. I dropped mine off today. Um, At at Aldi, that costs me less than 10 bucks uh, each month in order to feed hungry people. So here is my challenge to you. And I challenge the early service the same thing. By noon today, I would love to look look at that sign-up sheet and see all of those slots filled. By noon today. There is an online sign up there for you or Linda Hollis's uh, contact information uh, is there for you. We would love it if 19 slots to give food on a monthly basis would be filled by today. We'd also love it. There's some other online sign ups. We sent these out in our church wide email this past week. We'll keep sending it out again until all of these slots are filled as well. Acolytes and Bible bearers, Aiden did a wonderful job lighting the candles today. We need more young people. 
Parents, guardians, we need more young people to sign up and fill those slots. Children's discipleship moments. Mr. Greg uh, did double duty today. He's been here as long as I've been here today, um, giving a, a children's discipleship moment. We need more people to do that. Scripture readers. Who's our scripture reader for today? Sorry. Uh, Kyle Thompson is going to do a wonderful job reading scripture for us today. You can do that job as well. Greeters, ushers, we have so many uh, wonderful hospitable folks uh, to greet you as you come in and to usher. We need more people to do that. All of these are in our weekly email or you can contact me and I will help you to sign up. Friends, we are a church full of hands. We are a church full of hands and many hands make for more ministry. And we need you to help us with that ministry. Uh, Finally, next Sunday is Discipleship Sunday. We celebrate discipleship in many ways. Our third graders are going to be receiving their third grade Bibles uh, in each of our worship services. You will have an opportunity to sign up to be part of a small group. We offer Sunday school classes, growth groups that meet during the week. Several other groups are going to be new and introduced uh, at this service as well that you can be a part of. Uh, During the 10 a.m. hour, all of our Sunday school classes are going to be here in the sanctuary celebrating our classes and promoting our young people into their next class. It's going to be a wonderful day to celebrate discipleship. Be part of it with us. We are so glad that you are part of us today and we continue our worship now with Mr. Greg, no I'm sorry, with our choir uh, whose anthem is Lord of the Small. Let us use this time to continue our worship of our God who loves us. Praise to the 
I want to invite our children now to come down front and spend the next few moments today with Mr. Greg. Okay, thank you for allowing me to share with you. Last Monday, I signed up to do this children's message, so I immediately started working on it. You know, I wanted to put my heart and soul in it. I worked on it all week. I rehearsed it. I changed it. I practiced it. And then at 2.31, Friday night, Saturday morning, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about this message. And, and you know, it just didn't seem like that was the right message. And God put another message on my heart. And that's the message that I'm going to share with you today. Wow, some of you may be thinking that you're going to hear a super powerful, life-changing, awe-inspiring message. Not this, not now, but you will when Jonathan preaches. But you won't hear that this morning. But what you will hear is what Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, put on my heart. And I'm going to talk to you a few minutes about blessings. And just like this morning when Aiden lighting the candles, that was a blessing. That was a blessing. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12, is part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' Sermon. We call that the Beatitudes, derived from the Latin word meaning blessedness. I'm going to read a little bit of Jesus' Sermon from Matthew. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessings are so much a part of our church and our daily lives do you remember coming up here last week and kneeling at the altar? Did any of you remember doing that last week? And you had something on your back? Backpack. Backpack, yeah. All of you, most of you, Evie and Ella came, Aiden, Mary Elizabeth, Edward. All of you came up here to, to be blessed. It was called the blessing of the backpacks, but more importantly, Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Christine and the church blessed you your teachers, your school administrators, and school staff. Blessings are so very, very important. We will be participating in communion today. Jesus, in front of his disciples, took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave the blessed bread to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. At home, when we sit down to eat a meal, we don't immediately jump in and eat, do we? What do we do? We do, a, we do a blessing, thanking God to bless this food to our bodies, don't we? And our church has many examples of blessings, too. Think about infant baptism. This baby is given blessings from the pastor and the church congregations, blessings to last a lifetime, and all of you have received those blessings. In marriage ceremonies, the bride and groom are blessed through Christ and the church. Here at Traveler's Rest, in the fall, our pastors have a service outside on the lawn that is called the blessing of the animals. Have any of you brought an animal up here to be blessed? I brought my two fat dogs. <laughs> we have seen dogs, cats, a goat, a horse, a turkey, a guinea pig, and a marmoset, all receiving these blessings because surely these are God's creatures. Before our teens and our adults went to T.R. Hatchie this year, they received a blessing from this church. Also, the choir and all, we have a number of songs that we sing that refer to blessings. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come thou fount of every blessing. Count your blessings. And one line of that is count your blessings, name them one by one. That's a lifetime of counting, isn't it? Counting all of your blessings. 
I just started reading this book called Blessings. And thank Pat Hansen for helping me there. And in it, the author says, it is your job to bless. And in doing so, you will see that blessings come back from God himself and pour out all over you. So as you give blessings, you receive blessings. Jesus gives us many, many blessings, but two of the most important blessings that Jesus gives us, forgiveness of sin and eternal life. How wonderful are those blessings. Let us now, with, now just close with a blessing on you and all of our church. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Amen. Man, what a blessing, Mr. Greg. Thank you so much. All right, young folks, uh, if you haven't yet already, before you head back to your seat, grab a worship notes clipboard, take some good notes today. Reminder to our three, four, and five-year-olds during the sermon time, if you want to come down here to the prayer ground, looks like we got a good puzzle to put together today. You're welcome to come down there as well. Uh, Kyle is here to read our scripture for the day for us today, in addition to being on the screen, and is also on the back of your bulletin on your trail guide for us all to follow along. The first scripture lesson this morning comes from the Revelation, second chapter, verses 2 through 5. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I also know that you are enduring and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The second verse is from 2 Kings 10th chapter, verse 15. When he left there, he met Jehonadab, son of Rechab, coming to meet him. He greeted him and said to him, Is your heart as true to mine as mine is to yours? Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, if it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand. Jehu took him up with him into the chariot. May the Spirit set our hearts, minds, souls, and selves on fire with these words. May it be so. We will remain seated for our hymn of preparation. It is from our hymnal, Jesus, Lord, we look to thee. Let's sing together. Today, we are beginning a new sermon series. It is called Revival, Wesley, Then and Now. We are going to be exploring the life and faith of Methodism's founder, John Wesley. 
uh, how he sparked a revival in the church and also a revival in his own life. And we're going to be asking, can he, along with the Holy Spirit, do that for us today? Can we spark a revival in our church and in our own lives today? Uh, I want to point you once again to the back of your bulletin, to your trail guide. You'll see that in addition to the scripture for the day, there's some space there for you to take notes. It's always our hope that the Holy Spirit will be speaking something meant just for you today that you're going to want to write down and take with you this week. And then there are some next steps for the journey and a prayer for this week's walk. All of this is designed to take what we do in here today out into your week and out into the world. Uh, this sermon series is based on a book by the Reverend Adam Hamilton, also called Revival. I just want to recommend that to you as a good supplement for this series. He goes a lot more in depth into John Wesley's life and faith. So I want to start off today with a question for you. How is it with your soul? How is it? with your soul. This was a question that John Wesley asked his first Methodists whenever they got together in groups and Wesley was big on Methodists getting together in small groups. The question was asked, how is it with your soul? So this is a question that we're going to ask not just here throughout this sermon series but whenever we, I want to encourage us whenever we get together in groups Outside of Sunday morning, Sunday school, growth groups, fellowship groups, maybe even church meetings, we ask this question, how is it with your soul? Good question from Wesley. Uh, in our scripture today from Revelation, uh, if you know the book of Revelation, you'll know that in the first couple of chapters we see uh, it, it is addressed to seven churches trivia teams that was one of our questions wasn't it it was addressed to seven churches and there are a couple that the risen christ is speaking to now remember uh back in you know we we hear the word church and we think of what we're doing here now back in this day back in biblical times when the church first formed church was small groups meeting in people's homes so, the risen Christ is addressing these small groups meeting in people's homes. And he is saying to a couple of them, you have lost your spark. You have lost your vitality. The church, the small group meeting together in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus says, you are lukewarm. I wish you were hot. I wish you were cold. But you're not. You're lukewarm. You've lost your vitality. And then in today's scripture, Jesus is addressing the church at Ephesus. Uh, when the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the church at Ephesus, we call that now Ephesians. Jesus is, the risen Christ is addressing this church and says, you have lost your vitality because you have abandoned your first love, which the risen Christ would say is me. You have abandoned the love that you first had for me. You have lost your vitality. You have lost your spark. Or today, the risen Christ would probably say to that church, you are languishing. You are languishing. Have you heard that term? That term has come into prominence a lot in the past couple of years. I read an article about it actually, about languishing. Have you all been languishing at all these last couple of years? I have. The bleh, the meh that many of us have felt in quarantine during COVID times. Feeling joyless, feeling aimless languishing and we've seen it play out we've seen this languishing play out in many different areas we've seen it play out in folks' jobs in careers you've heard of the great resignation that has been happening people are bleh and mad joyless in their jobs and so they're seeking uh, a different way to uh, accomplish their careers um, we've been seeing it in relationships and friendships in, in marriages and in dating uh, I mean this was pre-COVID times but you know uh, things just become bleh meh they become so routine you forget your spark you forget to to date each other what has uh, attracted to each other in the first place and unfortunately we've seen it in the church we've seen it in our faith spiritual burnout church hurt institutional church abuses that have been coming to light. A lot of this has been spurred on by COVID from the past couple of years, but it was happening before that too. Languishing, losing your spark and vitality. 
Thankfully, though, thankfully, uh, the article doesn't stop at languishing. It goes on and talks about from this languishing, flourishing can come. Flourishing can come. You've got to do some things in order to get some flourishing going. But it talks about finding the flow in meaningful activities. Adapting to the constant change. What is that saying? The only thing constant is change. And we, if we adapt to that, we can find our flow. Uh, If we find new things that we can hold on to and, and, and keep, if we reconnect with a community, we can find the flow. We can begin flourishing. So thinking about reconnecting, reconnecting. Uh, You can reconnect with your vocation. Uh, Remember what called you to your career or vocation in the first place. Remember that first love that you had. And it might be going back to your job that you presently have, or it might be picking a different job or a different career, but that vocation, that calling is still there. Remember what called you to it in the first place. Reconnect in your relationships, in your friendships, in your relationships. Remember what first attracted you to that other person. Even though you're both now different than you used to be, there was something that brought you together. Reconnect with each other and we can reconnect with the risen Christ as well the risen Christ speaks to us in these pages from Revelation I know your works I know that you are enduring and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary you have abandoned the love you had at first but but remember remember from where you came and repent that's just a big old churchy word that just means change your heart and your life change your direction turn around turn toward me Jesus says remember the love that you had at first and then he says and do the works you did at first remember and do the works you did at first reconnect with Christ reconnect with Christ's community Do the works that Christ is calling us to do. Even though all of this continues to change, it continues to look different. You know, in our opening reading today from Matthew's Gospel, I love that translation. Jesus says, I will build my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Think about expansive energy for a second. I I am not a physics person or a science person, but even I I think I know about energy that expands, right? Isn't there a lot of change that's involved with that? Something keeps on expanding and going and going. There's a lot of change that's involved with that. And if a church is filled with that expansive energy, there's going to be change. I mean, I don't have to tell you. We've seen so much change in the church just over the past couple of years let alone just go all the way back centuries and you'll see a lot of change too. I mean, church looks different today than it did two years ago. And I know, I know, I know the feeling we want, we want it to come back. We want the ways that we did it before 2020 to come back. We want some of the people to come back. We want it to be the way that it always has been. I want some of that too. I know that feeling. I've been inspired lately by uh, the author Rebecca Simon Peter. (laughs) Now, if that's not a good Christian biblical name, I don't know what is. Rebecca Simon Peter uh, wrote this great little book. And uh, in fact, I like it so much, I've been giving it out to some of our church's leadership. But in the book, she says, don't come back to church. Come forward with the church. Don't come back to church. Come forward with the church. Remember your first love. Remember how God loved you first. And remember how God's love lit a fire in you. How it strangely warmed you. How it lit a fire under you. How it put you in a church on fire with the Holy Spirit. A church so expansive with energy that we can't help but change. We can't help but move forward. We can't help but keep expanding out, turning towards Christ who is always walking new trails. 
the risen Christ who is wanting to revive our church, our community, our world, and our own selves. Don't come back. Come forward with us. See, John Wesley, even though this was 300 years ago in the mid-1700s, John Wesley saw his church Kind of the same way. He looked around the Church of England. He was part of the Church of England. He looked around and saw a lot of languishing. A lot of loss of vitality. He saw his church in need of revival. And it turns out that Wesley himself was in need of a revival too. We're going to get more into that in some upcoming sermons. But a quick biography of John Wesley. He was born in Epworth, England in 1703 to Samuel and Susanna. John was one of 19 children. 19 children. Uh, Some of them, of course, uh, being the times that it were, some of them did not survive childhood. But uh, there were a lot of siblings. Uh, His most famous sibling, we know, is Charles Wesley. Uh, He was a great hymn writer, part of the Methodist movement, along with his brother John. The hymn uh, of preparation that we sang together was Charles Wesley's, one of Charles Wesley's hymns. Uh, His mother is Susanna. We're going to talk much more about her next week. His father, Samuel, was a priest in the Church of England. Now, if you know about the Church of England, you know how the Church of England was formed. It was formed in 1534 by Henry VIII, who wanted a divorce, and so he split off from uh, the Roman Catholic Church and formed his own church, which became the Church of England. So 200 years later, John Wesley comes on the scene and there is still massive religious upheaval from a split that happened 200 years prior. So lots of religious upheaval. Add to that the Enlightenment ideals that were coming out uh, of rationalism and science that are questioning some of the old traditional beliefs of the church We've got a stew of lukewarm, languishing, weary of of religion people who are in need of a revival. So John Wesley comes onto the scene. Uh, One of the things that governed Wesley's approach to helping spark a revival, uh, it was a Latin term, it was first coined by Queen Elizabeth, it's called the Via Media. The Via Media, it's Latin for the middle way. The middle way. Uh, Queen Elizabeth in the late 1500s was trying to, uh, you know, control this church split that went on between Catholics and Protestants. And so she was known for the Via Media, the middle way, trying to find compromise between those two different groups. So Wesley adopted this as well. He got it from his father, Samuel. Uh, who I said was a priest in the Church of England, and yet Samuel's father before him was a Puritan. And Puritans worship completely different than the Church of England. You know, Church of England is high church, and Puritans were, I don't want to call them low church, but they just, they were not high church. Um, And so this influenced Wesley's beliefs as well. So Wesley's via media, uh, he was a priest in the Church of England, robes in a high church, and yet He also embraced some of these Puritan expressions of faith. Uh, He worshipped in the high church tradition and yet he also opened up preaching houses outside of the church filled with rousing hymn singing. (laughs) Now to us that sounds great. Uh, But to people of the time that was something rousing hymn singing. Wait a minute. Wesley preached in the pulpit. But then he also left the walls of the church, and I love the way he puts this in his journal, I submitted to be more vile by going outside and preaching in the fields. So we're having an outdoor worship service the first Sunday of October. I'm going to invite you that Sunday to be more vile with us. Wesley valued and listened to people on both sides of the theological debate he found truth in each side and he charted a middle way a via media with the best of both sides wesley preached a sermon called catholic spirit and again catholic here means universal Um, by the way i am reading john wesley's sermons so you don't have to (laughs) you are welcome 
However, uh, there is an online compendium of his sermons. I will provide a link for that in tomorrow's email if you are curious and if you would like to read some of these sermons. But anyway, in his sermon, Catholic Spirit, Wesley preaches uh, it based on our second scripture that you heard read today, 2 Kings 10.15. I think this is the only time I've ever preached on 2 Kings 10.15. Kyle, you did a wonderful job with those names. I'm just going to call him J-Dab. Jehonadab, J-Dab, and then Jehu. So uh, in this particular passage, Jehu is about to become the king of Israel. So a guy who's about to become king. And he comes uh, comes in contact with Jadab. Uh, Jadab is from a religious sect that lived simply, that didn't own property, and didn't drink wine. So probably about as opposite from a guy who's about to become king as you can get. And yet, Jehu reaches his hand out in friendship and pulls Jadab up into his uh, chariot with him. John Wesley says this in the sermon, But although a difference of opinions or modes of worship may prevent an entire external union, yet need it prevent our union in affection. Though we can't think alike, may we not love alike. May we not be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. Wesley makes some observations about this verse from Kings. Uh, He notes that Jehu did not ask about Jadab's opinions, and yet tis certain he held some which were very uncommon, indeed quite peculiar. Notice that Jehu didn't ask about the way that Jadab worships. Although it is highly probable, there was in this respect also a very wide difference between them. Instead, Jehu says to Jadab, is your heart with mine? If so, here is my hand. And so Wesley says that uh, there are some other questions that that particular question implies. This is how Wesley puts it in his 18th century English. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy faith filled with the energy of love? Is thy heart right toward my neighbor? Dost thou love as thyself all mankind without exception? Do you love even the enemies of God, the unthankful and the unholy? Do your bowels yearn over them? I love 18th century English. (laughs) Do you show your love by your works? Wesley's questions. Uh, Another uh, book that I want to recommend to you, it's actually a Bible, a Bible I want to recommend to you. It's the Wesley Study Bible. And uh, in addition to uh, having scripture, there are footnotes that has... uh, Things to do with John Wesley and with Methodism. Uh, In uh, this Bible, in the commentary, it says this about Wesley. He says, it says, Wesley refused to accept unbiblical ideas just for the sake of unity. He had some standards, biblical standards. Nevertheless, he extended his hand of friendship unconditionally. Interfaith and ecumenical relations are worth pursuing, although they should not require the abandonment of one's biblical and reasonable convictions. Wesley maintains that the person who truly has the Catholic spirit extends love to everyone, neighbors and strangers, friends and enemies. Though we may not think alike, may we not love alike. That's a great question from Wesley. That helped lead to the Methodist revival in Wesley's days. I think it's a great question for us now. Can it lead to another Methodist revival in our days? I mean, do we need a little bit of Catholic spirit today? That's a rhetorical question. You know that we need it. You know that we need it in politics. You do not need me to expand on that thought any further. And I won't. But when it comes to that, when it comes to political divides, how will they know 
us? How will they know us? When it comes to dealing with other Christians, do we need a little Catholic spirit? You know, you're evangelical, you're progressive, you're biblical, you're not. You're Baptist, you're Catholic, you're Pentecostal, you're a Methodist, but which kind of Methodist? (laughs) How will they know us? When it comes to our non-Christian neighbors, either of different religions or of no religion, I mean, what, the nuns and the duns, right? The nun, no more, that's increasing these days when it comes to them. You know, they're watching us, and if they know that you're a Christian, you know, we might be the only gospel some people ever read. How will they know us? So, I think we should let John Wesley ask these questions of us as well. And these are on your trail guide. These are on your next steps for the journey. And we'll let him ask these questions of us, even in his 18th century English. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy faith filled with the energy of love, the energy, the expansive energy of love? Is thy heart right toward thy neighbor? Does thou love as thyself all mankind without exception? Do you love even the enemies of God, the unthankful and the unholy? Do your bowels yearn over them? Do you show your love by your works? We gave out these love your neighbor signs a couple of years ago. And I still see several of them in your yards when I drive around our community. And uh, we've got more. We've got more back there. If you'd like to pick one up along with the stake that it'll go in the ground. Uh, And if we run out, let me know. And I'd be happy to order more. Be happy to spend some money on that because not only are these signs for our neighbors I think more so they're signs for us I know for me when I walk out my door I need that reminder in my front yard for me every time I walk out my door how will they know us how will they know us you know I think about Jesus and today we're coming to Jesus's table for what we now call communion and of course that's based on uh, the Last Supper, but even before that Last Supper in the Gospels, Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, you'll see that every other chapter, Jesus is sitting down at a table and eating. And he's inviting all sorts of people to come and eat with him. So think about those first uh, 12 disciples that he called. I'm sure that after all of them uh, kind of formed up behind him, they sat down and they ate a meal together. Think about these 12 disciples And about who was sitting at Jesus' table. I mean, he had Matthew, the tax collector, who was a collaborator with the Romans. And he had Simon the Zealot. The Zealots were a group of people who took pleasure in killing collaborators with the Romans. And Matthew and Simon were sitting at the same table. He had fishermen. And he had philosophers. He had hotheads. James and John, who we nicknamed the Sons of Thunder. They were hotheads. Then he had quiet ones, disciples who we never hear a peep from in all of the Gospels. He had the faithful, and he had the betrayers. Sometimes those were the same people. And that was just his 12 disciples. I mean, think about it. He also ate, and he invited uh, Pharisees and prostitutes sit down with him. Uh, He invited Jews and Samaritans and Gentiles to all come and sit with him. He invited the good religious people and the sinners, sometimes the same people, to come and sit with him. He invited men and women and children and still does us to come and sit with him. I can imagine Jesus posing the same question that we find in that verse from Kings. Is your heart as true to mine as mine is to yours? Jesus asks all of us, if it is, then come 
to my table. It is time for a revival. Because, my friends, this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Because it's the Lord who invites you. It is God's will that those who want to connect with God and meet God here should do so. I want to take a moment now and I want to pray uh, on behalf of all of us. And I want us all to confess to God, to admit the times in our lives when we have sinned and fallen short. Let us pray. Merciful God, we admit that there are times when we stray off the path that you want us to walk. There are times when we have fallen short of the ideals that you have laid out for us. There are times when we have jumped over the guardrails that you have laid down for us, the guardrails of love God and love neighbor. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for not loving you with our whole heart. Forgive us for not loving our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us for not loving ourselves as you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God whose forgiveness is there before we can even acknowledge it. Thank you, God, that while we were all sinners, Christ died for each and every one of us, proving God's love for each and every one of us. And so, my dear friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. We all are forgiven. And for that, you can join your voices with mine as the church and say amen. Amen. You know, Greg spoke about blessings with the children this morning and we have a special blessing that he mentioned um, when we come to the table for communion and that is the great thanksgiving and that means when we pray that blessing together um, that this is not you know just a snack at church this is a special meal this is a holy meal this is a sacred meal that we it's bread and it's juice, but it's transformed into the real presence of Christ with us. And so if you will bless the bread and cup with me as we say the great Thanksgiving, your words will be on your screen, it's in bold, your words are in bold, and some of them will be sung responses, and Jonathan will be leading that part. The Lord be with you. Be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. After me, hang on, hang on. please repeat after me. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who have been oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit. On us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen, 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 amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. invite our servers to please make their way forward. We are partaking today by what we call intinction. We ask that you come down the center aisle. There are two stations. Uh, come with your hands out and a piece of bread will be put into your hand. Uh, take that bread then and dip it into the cup and receive the elements together. We also offer prepackaged elements. If you are more comfortable with those, just please ask your server for that. We also offer gluten-free bread. And today the gluten-free bread is sweet Hawaiian bread, just like the regular bread is as well. So... Uh, Either way you have it, you are going to taste and see the goodness of God. Uh, friends, if you are not able to come forward, uh, please wait and uh, our servers will come down and please just raise your hand and let us know and we will be happy to come uh, and serve you. The table is ready, friends. Come, receive the good gifts of God.
you for your continued generosity and giving to the mission and ministry of Travelers Rest United Methodist Church through your financial gifts. Uh, just a reminder that there are several ways you can do that. You can do it in person. We're not going to pass the plates today, but the offering plates are there for you um, on your way out. You can also go online and set up an e-giving account or text to give at the number you'll find. Thank you for continuing to be a blessing as we are surely blessed. Uh, I want to invite you to stand now and let's join our voices together in the singing of our doxology. church, then please speak to Pastor Jonathan or myself after service today. Our hymn of sending today, if you'll remain standing, is O Church of God United. light of Christ is now leaving the building. The light of Christ is heading out into the world and we are called to follow that light and to be reflections of Christ's great love. Pastor Christine will be at that door. If you want to come by and say hey to her, I'll be at that door uh, leading out to the bell tower. After I do one more thing, uh, we need to make sure everybody gets served communion here and I've got to get Jan Howell before uh, we <laughs> head out. So uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go forth with these words of John Wesley, your part is in bold. This is Wesley's rule. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can. As long as you ever can, may it be so.
Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.